brought to you by Pearshell Financial Group. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. A quick programming note. I'll be sitting in for the esteemed Dennis Prager. I'll be doing his show from uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Chicago time today. Will you be in this studio here? I will be in this studio here. What's your call-in number so we can line our our calls now? i got to get all those details on. Uh, But if you want to listen, whatever. Well, yeah, I'll listen. It's fun. It's fun. It's a great honor. Dennis Prager, obviously. Uh, a great talk show host for many, many moons, and I followed him, wrote his books, the whole thing. Uh, well, you got into Prager U because of what you really did. Why don't co- you tell people? Correct, yeah. But, We're on to you, yeah. man. Dad stroked uh, you know, $500,000 check to Prager U, and I uh, got a graduate degree from and then that. who took your ACT and SAT yeah, test Yeah, exactly. For you. Uh, so anyway, programming note there, Dennis Prager. Uh, probably one of the topics we'll discuss, as we've discussed this morning, is... Uh, the end of the world in 12 years, which has been one of the dominant points of discussion for the last several weeks because of these apocalyptic predictions by Democrat socialists, normally reserved for the contents of sandwich boards, Uh uh, people that are sort of marginally attached to reality, wander around in, like in downtown centers like Chicago. But now it's a stock and trade of Democrat candidates for president of the United States, including Beto O'Rourke's announcement yesterday, uh, that we're all going to die in 12 years? Well, he uh, right. I mean, he's already starting to evacuate Houston. And it's just the first day of his campaign. We face catastrophe and crisis on this planet, even if we were to stop emitting carbon today, right now, at this moment. We know that the storms that we saw in Texas, Harvey, which dumped the, the landfall record amount of rain on the United States of America, as long as we've been keeping records, that claim the lives of too many of our fellow Americans, flooded people literally out of their homes and businesses. Storms like Harvey are only gonna become more frequent and more severe and more devastating, and ultimately they'll compromise the ability to live in a city like Houston, Texas. So he's part of the uh, part of the Save the Planet gang along with AOC and virtually every candidate for president on the Dem side. But we've uh, tried to uh, interject some science here We've talked to Patrick Moore, the co-founder of Greenpeace. We talked to Bjorn Lumberg at the Copenhagen Center, some of his scholarship on the topic of uh, climate, uh, just asking questions. And that's what uh, Guy Sorman did over at City Journal, the product of the Manhattan Institute that I reference often because they do great work there. Guy Sorman's a contributing editor at City Journal, and he uh, had a great interview with another climatologist, you know, an actual scientist in climate named Judith Curry. Well, but Beto said that it's it's unanimous that all the scientists agree that it, this is going to happen. The world's going to end in 12 years. I, I'm, I'm sure he just is not familiar with Judith Curry's work yeah, and the work sh- of so many others. I'm, just an accident on Beto's part. I'm sure he wouldn't be disingenuous on the topic. But for more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined again by Guy Sorman. Guy, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you to have me. Uh, so uh, one of the things that's interesting, what uh, Judith Curry says, as you recount in uh, your exchange with her, is uh, just the fact of it, it, the humility piece of this, which I go to often, the uncertainty piece of it. We don't know. That's why we pursue scientific discovery. We have to test and retest and challenge and subject to peer review because there are things that we don't know. There are phenomena we can't explain. And uh, as Judith Curry references in your piece, there's just some scientists who don't want uh, to deal with uncertainty, don't like uncertainty, or are incentivized to ignore uncertainty, and that seems to be the source of, of uh, a lot of the disagreement. Yeah, well, to, to ignore uncertainty is not to be a scientist because science, by definition, uh, is all about uncertainty, and the, uh, the climate is a good the, uh, demonstration of that. I mean, the, we know, I mean, scientists know for sure that there is a, a long-term trend uh, toward uh, a, a warmer planet. It's, it's, it will take centuries. It started a long time ago. Uh, it, will not, it does not, and it will not disrupt our life. And I'm, I'm really uh, shocked, and I think any uh, honest uh, scientist will be shocked to hear 
or politicians say that uh, you can't live in Houston anymore because of climate change. I mean, there is absolutely uh, no connection between what scientists say and and the discourse uh, by politicians. So I, I think for me, uh, the big question is not about climate change. The, the big question is how climate change has become a kind of a political religion, and why do people uh, believe in this new political religion? Well, right, and and why are they impervious to evidence or the lack thereof? So um, what I'm hearing you say is that perhaps... Uh, deindustrialization of America is a, is not proportional to uh, whatever threat may lie in the observations of climate over an extended period of time. Yeah. Anyway, I, I think that there are many factors why people want to believe in climate change. I mean, first of all, people like to believe in something. Okay, they they need kind of a, a religion. Uh, if this religion pretends to be scientific, it's even better. You know, because you you look like an enlightened guy, you know about science, so it's, it's good for your, your ego, okay? And also, uh, many politicians and ordinary people would like to, to, to think that they can have an influence on the planet. You know, it gives them a sense of power, you know, uh, because of my behavior, uh, the way I treat my garbage, the way I, I, I drive my car, uh, I'm changing uh, the world. Uh, mm -hmm. So all those are all the explanations which are not related to science, but which are related, I think, to human psychology and to the desire I mean, to, uh, to, to believe in something and to believe, and especially for a politician, uh, to let people think that as a politician you can change the world, you can change y your life. So I think it's quite easy to explain uh, why this uh, new religion of climate change uh, is working, and the connection with science is, uh, is very small, actually. Well, how do you feel about recycling? Because I'm a big recycler, and Dan thinks that that's just... Oh, I mean, uh, look, uh, uh, I have nothing about... Re I'm, I, I'm totally against pollution, uh, any kind of pollution. So uh, I think uh, if we fight pollution and recycling is part of this fight, uh, that's just fine. I mean, it makes our life better, our environment cleaner. It's the same with carbon, you know. And the, the less carbon we use, I mean, the, the, the air becomes cleaner, we breathe easier, so that's perfectly okay. But it's totally different uh, from the doomsday prediction saying the world is over in 12 years. And it's totally different from saying, well, we had a terrible storm and this is because of us and because of our behavior. You know, the, the, those are two different, uh, two different trends. I mean, uh, fighting against pollution is fine, and looking for alternative energy is fine. Maybe we'll find some, you know, cleaner and cheaper energy in the future. That's okay with me. Uh, but, but on the other hand, to say the, uh, you know, the doomsday prediction, uh, this just doesn't connect. Well, right. The lack of proportionality goes in both directions. The, oh, yeah. I mean, the, they, it, I mean, once again, it's two different things, you know. Uh, uh, you, it's, recycling is good, and you well, cannot be against it because, once of. again, it makes your life better on a day-to-day -day life. Uh, but to say that uh, the world is over in 12 years, I mean, they, uh, um, they, that's absurd. Well, right. But there's also, I mean, there's like a lot of fraudulent government recycling programs. That's what I'm getting into. I know what you're saying just about being good stewards of the environment and our resources. Of course, who's pro-pollution? Yes. Nobody's pro-pollution. It's about trade-off yeah, well, and, sensi yeah, and but sensibility. The, the, yes. But today, the t total confusion uh, be between both, I mean, I would say, uh, fighting pollution, and including carbon, which is a polluting factor, that's one thing, and, uh, and all the, uh, what I call the political religion, uh, the green political religion is something else. Well, right, and the, the other side of the, uh, the disproportionate response is suggesting, for example, which has become like a, the, uh, one of the tenets of the religion you speak of, somehow banning plastic straws or plastic bags is going to be our salvation. That's the existential threat. Plast because uh, Turtle had a straw in his nose, plastic straws got to go, plastic bags got to go. 
Yeah, but you know, uh, um, this gives the illusion to our individuals, and you see now young kids, you know, joining the movement that they uh, they have the power. They have the power to change the planet. They have the power to change the world. So it's a very strong psychological incentive to believe that you yourself and uh, can can change the world. And, you know, in the past, that was, especially in Europe, this was uh, why people were so attracted by Marxism, yes. other ideologies. See, I mean, it, because it gives you this, this feeling that you are at the top of the world. So by getting uh, rid of your straw, I mean, you change the world. And uh, this is magnificent, no, for your ego. It's fantastic. One of the things uh, you point out uh, in your piece, again, with Judith Curry is yep. a conversation you had uh, more than a decade ago with uh, the uh, uh, director of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change at right. the UN. And um, it's, you sort of intimate that, um, you know, maybe science isn't what's driving the IPCC or the UN either, and, you're, and you have scientists not driving the science. Yes. And the... Um, the, the you know, all the, the data which are used in, by the media and by politicians come from the UN and from the IPCC organization. And the argument is to say, look, there is a consensus. The UN says so. Now, when you get into detail and you meet the people at the UN in charge of climate change, you discover that there is a selection. And they are selected because they believe, and I insist on the word believe, they believe that there is climate change. So there is power, there is money, there is influence, and if you are a true scientist like Judith Curry, you will not be recruited nor uh, financially supported uh, to show that, well, things are a bit more complicated. So it's a... Um, uh, this story about, you know, there is a, a scientific consensus. Of course, I mean, if you gather uh, scientists who already believe from the very beginning uh, before getting into research that there is climate change and that carbon is the cause of, 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 the, of the change, well, you'll have a consensus because you build a consensus and you find the consensus from right. the very beginning. If you eliminate dissent, you get a consensus, exactly. Exactly. Got, got, Absolutely. Absolutely. But which was extraordinary, which I mentioned in my piece, is that this has been recognized by Mr. Chaudhuri, who was the head of the IPCC. And he shared, I just remember that he shared the Peace Nobel Prize with Al Gore. Yes. And, and well, the, guy had not, the guy was not a climatologist. He was a, a railway engineer. I have nothing against railway engineer. But why would you select a railway engineer <laughs> To head the uh, to head the panel on climate change at the UN, that's a bit weird. Yeah, or listen to a United States senator on climate change, for that matter. Yeah, same. Uh, Guy, <laughs> Guy Sorman, City Journal contributing editor. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. And he joined us on our Turnkey Dot Pro Answer Line. Connect with Dan and Amy on the AM five sixty The Answer mobile app. Just text the word app to 